I've said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you might miss it. If you've been watching this channel for any time at all, you'll know that I continuously shape my life around Ferris Bueller's day off. If you haven't seen it, you should. I really take that quote to heart because to me, everything feels super fleeting and I always feel like I'm just about to miss something really important. And that's one of the reasons I started photography in the first place is so I could capture those moments and hold on to them. And lately I've been sort of shaking up my style a little bit. I've been feeling really inspired by artists like these and their work is nothing like mine. I'm very known for my super fast, frenetic, energetic, super speedy, stealthy street photography. And I love doing that, but part of my brain has been wondering if maybe there's some merit in slowing down a bit and trying out a more intentional shooting style where I really think about composition and framing and really put a lot more of myself into the picture. See, when I shoot street, a lot of the time I'm stumbling across something and then snapping it up. I am in the art in the unique way that I'm able to identify those interesting scenes and those interesting emotions. It feels like I don't construct the pictures very much. And a lot of the work that I've been looking at, it really feels like there's an artist behind it. And I'm not dissing my own work. I think I like my work. I think I like my work, but I wanna experiment and see what else I can create in a completely different way. When I talk about this to other photographers, like the most common thing they'll say is, just shoot film. Uh, listen, it won't. You, I can go through a whole roll of film in like 10 minutes. I used to shoot five rolls of film a day. The fastest I am with any camera is with this. And so in an effort to really aggressively and abruptly break myself out of that cycle, I'm gonna challenge myself like quite a lot actually. I'm going out at night shooting architecture on film. That might sound boring, stay with me. Now, this is gonna slow me down for several reasons. First of all, architecture is really hard to get right in camera, right? Like you have to think about framing and perspective, but then also like, if you get it a little bit off, it just really looks off. And so you do have to be quite intentional. And it's not something that comes naturally to me. I photograph people. And then there's the obvious part of like, I'm going to shoot film at night, which means I'm gonna be on a tripod and I'm gonna be using a shutter release, which is way more fun than it deserves to be. And yes, because I'm filming myself doing it, I am gonna be carrying two tripods and two cameras around at night on my own. Now, there's an obvious choice for the film stock here. I'm shooting 70s, 80s, brutalist architecture, it's hard concrete at night. I want them to look cold because it is bloody cold. It has to be sinister, doesn't it? It has to be, it has to be. It has, there's no other option. It has to be sinister 800T. One of the, um, one of the really compelling things about shooting these brutalist buildings is like, I find brutalist buildings really beautiful, but also kind of ugly at the same time. I love the look of brutalist buildings and the more time I spend around them, the more I realize they feel very homely. But at the same time, it's very easy for them to look really nasty. And I kind of like that about them. I first discovered brutalism was like a thing at all when I was wandering aimlessly about London one day doing my street photography thing. And I walked into a mind blowing scene, which I later learned is called The Barbican. And I fell in love, dude, like straight away. I was like, this is gorgeous. And it's funny cause some people hate it. So join me on this little adventure as I carry way too much heavy gear across Warsaw at night and attempt to try my hand at a much more intentional, artistic, architectural photography style. I want the pictures to be beautiful, but also a little bit haunting. I want you to feel something when you look at them. To be honest, I'm actually really nervous. Like I've never really tried proper serious architectural photography. And to be completely honest with you, I basically never use a tripod because I hate them. There's a very good chance that this could go terribly.
Okay, um, this is our first location. This church is absolutely gorgeous. I've just done a quick metering. The highlights are sitting at about mm, one second, and that, that's at F8. I'm exposing for ISO 640 since I tend to find that Cine still does a little bit better when it's got much more light. Um, the, so the highlights are about one second. The deepest shadows are about six seconds. So I think I'm gonna split the difference here and do about a five second long exposure. Actually, I'm gonna do six seconds and hope that reciprocity cuts out most of the nasty stuff. I just think this building is just gorgeous. I mean, I'm looking at it in the monitor and it's just like monolithic block of concrete with this, it's like, I just really like it. Can I just say, I've never really got to grips with the 135 mil and I think I still haven't. 50 at F8, because that's all I needed for focused at infinity, which I like. This like block of the side of it. It's gonna. Okay, I'm gonna give this a one second long exposure to meter for the highlights, and then I'm gonna give it a four ish second long exposure, counting in my head for fun. That's one second. Actually, that was a half a second, and then I've just done one second, so it turns out I'm bracketing this three times. Of course. That was a bit longer than I wanted. People who do this on a regular basis, can you please, for the love of God, explain to me how you focus, because I can't see a thing. Okay, so that was kind of mind-blowing. I love the experience of going out and actually being more intentional, and I think practicing that artistic mindset was like mind-blowing enough in itself. Having to deal with all of the insanely difficult compositional decision-making involved in creating an architectural photo that works aesthetically and makes you feel something. It's so difficult. I loved that challenge. I loved the experience of going, just pushing myself outside of my comfort zone like that and shooting something I was totally unfamiliar with has both humbled me a little bit and increased my confidence as an artist because now I've had to be in that situation where I am making the decisions. I got to choose the picture that I wanted to make exactly how I wanted to make it within reason. Combining my frenetic, energetic, chaotic, humorous street photography aesthetic into a really intentional and deliberate compositional style where I've crafted the perfect image that I see in my brain is the ultimate end goal for my photography. I'm just, I'm really excited to see what I shoot over the next couple of years and how that style evolves. By the way, you should sign up to my email list. We can email back and forth. Like it's not just a blasted out thing. Like everyone replies and we chat and it's just a really cool way for me to stay in touch show you some stuff I've shot, you can show me some stuff you've shot, there's a link in the thing. If there's one thing that you should take away from this video, it's that like figuring out what you're good at and then doing the exact opposite is so rewarding. And it's weird because on the one hand, I'm like, I am not good at this at all yet. The results, I like the photos I took. However, I'm aware that I'm very much an amateur when it comes to the stuff that I was shooting. But the crazy thing about it is, is how much confidence I felt in my ability as a creative because I was creating. Street photography a lot of the time can very quickly evolve into a funny person scavenger hunt and 
while that can be really fun, it does strip away a little bit of the creative. Like I love cinema and I want my photos to look like cinema. Sometimes street photography can feel a bit like a Christmas cracker joke, you know? And I want it to be more than that. I want it to make you feel something. This challenge proved to me that I can do the creation from scratch. I can look at a scene, decide how I want the viewer to feel when they look at it. So if you're a street person or a portraits person or try doing the opposite, stay hydrated and create art.